The compression or stretching of a spring is a reversible process, but only within a certain range of deformations, which we call the elastic range. If you deform it too far, then it will deform irreversibly. We then say that you've taken that spring beyond its elastic limit. One more example, and this is one that students often have a great deal of difficulty with because there's something slightly counterintuitive about it. Here is a car, and it's speeding up, and we know the only thing it's touching is the road, and so there will be a contact force of the road on the car, and then there will be the usual gravitational force. Again, this time I'm going to indicate the acceleration first because it's going to help me think about the contact force due to the road. And again, to get that acceleration, this contact force has to be tipped. It's going to have to be tipped forward. which means if you redraw it, replacing that contact force with its two pieces, then you will have the perpendicular force pointing up. And this is the part that's counterintuitive, the friction force points forward. And you might think about what kind of friction that is. You might be inclined to say kinetic because the car is moving. But remember, it's whether there's slipping occurring that determines it. And if it's not spinning its tires on the road, there's no slipping going along. And so this is in fact a static friction. Another key thing about the forces that springs exert is that they depend on how much you stretch the spring. If you only pull a little bit, then the spring will exert a relatively small force back on your hand. But if you stretch it out more, it'll exert a stronger force. Similarly, if you compress it more, that also makes the push that it exerts back on your hand larger.